and gentlemen, uh, to our program. And I am really delighted, uh, specifically because of the gentleman that I'm about to introduce. He is a gentleman who has, uh, he's done it all. But primarily, he has made Las Vegas the city that it is. He has performed in every facet of that town. And when people come to Las Vegas, the first thing they want to know, is he there? If you see this man perform, you're seeing the epitome of comic genius, and I'm delighted to have him on our show. Mr. Shecky Green, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right there. What a thing to introduce me about Las Vegas. They're on strike right now with all the troubles going on and everything else. I know, but you still I made I should have come town. here with a poster. <laughs> you still made the town. You're one of the forerunners of making entertainment important in the city. And I remember, I'm going back a long way. I remember one night at the Riviera Lounge, I laughed as hard as I've ever laughed in my life. And I don't say that because you're here or because you're on the show, but you know that I feel that way about you. And I, I'm a good audience. I really yes, am you a are. good audience. And when I saw you at the Sands a year ago, the laughter was no different. It was that kind of magic. Well, it was the same act. <laughs> you got you. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> the thing, the, the trouble, uh, and I will say this openly, and I, I probably will be uh, chastised for it, in Las Vegas is the town has changed, has changed considerably, you know? And um, with the individual performers are, are not as prevalent as we used to have them. It's now production shows. Now, I don't know how the people feel about them. I don't particularly like them, because if you've seen one nude girl, you've seen them all. Because when I was, forgive me, ladies, for saying this, but I don't believe there's anything sexy about a nude woman. My wife used to walk in front of, at night, with a black lace negligee. To me, that was sex. And then I would wait for her to go to sleep, and then I would put on that black lace negligee. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just, uh, they got the production shows and everything else, and I think it's too many of them in Las Vegas. And they've got the country western music, which I don't, I'm not putting it down, believe me when I tell you something. Because I know Willie Nelson spends a lot of money for his wardrobe. And, uh, <laughs> but I mean, I, the individual performers made Las Vegas. And I think these new owners that took over the hotels and everything, because we work for the people that they used to, they say, was a hoodlum element. I do not believe those people were a hoodlum element. You know what I mean? Because uh, I went up to visit one just the other day, and uh, <laughs> he got about another year to go, but... Uh, he said, how you doing, Shaggy? I started with those. Those are the people... So did I. But those are the people that own nightclubs. I got know? news for you. When they ran Las Vegas, we didn't have one fifth of the crime that we have in that town now. Yeah, I'll even go better than that. You want to know, since the first time I came to Las Vegas was 1953. And I drove in, and we got a paper in Las Vegas, and I swear this is a true story, and the headline in the Las Vegas Sun said, Standard Oil Station robbed $12. It was a headline. That was the kind of crime that we had yeah. then, you know? Right. Of course, the world has changed and everything else, what's going on, but uh, the town was, uh, and I never... I never figured the town would get that much bigger because I had a business manager here in this uh, city of, uh, of Los Angeles that uh, once you make a little money, you, you give 5% to a business manager. And I said to him, let's buy some property in Vegas. And he said, it'll be a ghost town, you know? And I didn't buy any property. And I call him up every day and I said, George, more ghosts are moving in, you know? To let <laughs> but uh, I miss what we had in Las Vegas. I miss uh, the late nights where... Four o'clock, it just started to uh, get started in Las Vegas. When Dean and I played the Sands, we would finish our second Who? show. Dean, <laughs> Dean Martin. What? He used to work for me, remember? <laughs> Everybody loves so oh, that one. That's yeah, that, the that, one, that. right? Dean and I would do our shows at the Sands, and then we would do a lounge show at the Sands at 2.30 or quarter three in the morning. Then we'd go over to the Frontier with Sam Butera and Louis Prima. We'd be up until six in the morning, seven, eight in the morning, and I know you did the same thing. And we had the kind of a town where buffets were not charged. People would come in and have a free buffet. A, a I'm high still, are you kidding? That's 20 years ago. I'm still living off the buffet. Take a look at <laughs> that. That's from 20 years ago. All right. 
I'll give you about a minute and a half to relax that so it'll go down. We're going to be back in just a moment after these important words from our sponsor. <laughs> What I hear all the time. I'm, we're back with Shecky Green. Uh, what I hear all the time is Shmuel Greenfield. That's Shmuel, my real Greenfield. Shecky Green. When I see people that have seen your show, and I have heard it from people who are in our business that I play golf with, shouldn't Shecky sing more? You have the kind of a voice that is not only educated, and this is not uh, flattery and or uh, doing this, but it's true. Did you ever? Did you ever sing straight? <laughs> Yes, hey, I, little guy. I, I did sing straight, and that's why I went to comedy. <laughs> I said to him, I said, Hey, Abbott, what do you think I should do? Hey, Abbott! All right, the Lipton spotlight falls on the infinitely magnificent Shecky Green going over there to let you hear. Get that off, it's a growth. Singing, Pavarotti can sing. Simprava mientore quando re salardo, lady with the blonde hair, so more. Oh, God, that's good. <laughs> yes. But you know something? The song, believe me when I tell not because of my age or anything else, I just, and I know there's a lot of kids that are going to hate me and everything, I don't particularly go for the type of music that's around today. I have a daughter that's 21 that goes to SMU in Dallas, Texas. Anybody know that school? <laughs> SMU. My daughter lives three blocks from UCLA in California here, but she goes to SMU because it's got one less letter for her to remember. <laughs> and, uh, Brilliant student, straight A, straight A student. Ask her anything, she goes, hey, hey, hey. Anyway, she said to me, Uncle Daddy, because I don't see too much of her, she's Uncle Daddy. She says, why don't you use groups when you work? You know, and I say, I like individual performers, I do. I like to work with Vic Damone, I, because not only he's got a great voice, I just like his initials. And, uh... <laughs> I work with, uh, I work with people like Frank Sinatra, and, uh, <laughs> I do that after I mention his name. Either I do that or he sends two guys and they do that, only they do it in the middle of the bone. Of thin stuff. <laughs> anyway, I got to my daughter, uh, Allison, uh, put on a record by the Bay City Rollers. I didn't even know whether they're around anymore. But this record sold 17 million copies, and this is the kind of music I just don't understand at my age. Listen to this song. Saturday night, Saturday night, Saturday night, Saturday night, oh, Saturday night, Saturday night, Saturday night, Saturday night, oh, Saturday night, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday night, oh, Saturday night. That's a real song. And one of the kids from the group was fired because he couldn't remember the lyric. Now, I have been in this business now, but I work with some great performers, and I've watched the great showmen of our business. I work with Yetta Sperling, you remember her? And, uh, <laughs> on Second Avenue, that remember you, Yetta Sperling. I work with people, well, I didn't actually work with this man, but I watched him work. I was working the uh, Riviera Lounge, Jer, and, uh, my times were different than the main room shows. And there was a man by the name of Marie Chevalier. Now, I'm sure a lot of the young kids sitting out there, this young girl over there, this beautiful blonde girl that I'm looking at. Beautiful blonde girl with glasses. Do you take a liking to me? Beautiful girl with glasses. Please don't just hee hee. I ran out of court, my dear, it's plain to tell. So our romance could never gel. I've got to go back and do the rest of my show. Goodbye, my dear. It wasn't even hello. Hey, that was good. Now, we, uh... Hey, stop that. If they want to applaud, let them applaud. 
Anyway, there was a man by the name of Maurice Chevalier who was my favorite. And every night I would go and see this man for an education. He'd come out and say, good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, over my audience. My name is Maurice Chevalier. People say, Maurice, how long are you going to be in show business? Ladies and gentlemen of my audience, show business is not a business. It is a way of life. You see, when I was 76 years old, I was in a movie called Fanny. There was a part in Fanny. Naturally, there was a part in Fanny. <laughs> I never figured that one out. <laughs> there was a part in Fanny where I said, Fanny, I love you, Fanny. I want to marry you, Fanny. She said, no, Maurice. No, Panis. Is you want to take it again or what? <laughs> she said, Panis, I cannot marry you, Panis, because I don't love you, Panis. I am in love with someone else. And besides Panis, I am pregnant with someone else's child. <laughs> Wonderful, Fanny. Because when the little boy is born and he opens up his eyes, I will be the first thing he sees. I will be his papa. You see, Fanny, a young man's love is different than an old man. A young man is physical and passionate. An old man is loving and tender. You see, Fanny, to me, love is the touch of your hand against my face. This is love, Fanny. Love is the touch of my lips against your brow. This is love, Fanny. Love is the touch of your face against my Fanny. This... <laughs> I think is the wrong routine. I don't know this one so well. I think I better run over it. <laughs> and then he would sing a song, Marie Chevalier. Je les range, qui se le dos chant fou, que ma rosson tradit. You are la vie en rose, et ma la rose du son dret ici du, je mets à la rafosse. Happy Pesach to all of you. You speak French. <laughs> This song that I sing is not really a song, it is a story. It is a story of an old lady by the name of Mademoiselle Gouletouache. She was 92 years old. She wanted to commit suicide. She turned on the gas, but it was an electric, sto electric stove. <laughs> you fump, say it again, it was an electric stove. <laughs> she tried to jump out of the window, but she lived in the basement. <laughs> she was unhappy with her life. She wanted to commit suicide. She said, God, I want to die. I am old, and there is no one left for me. And then a voice said, Mademoiselle Gouletouach, Who is that? It is me, a voice, Mademoiselle Gouletouach. Whether you are nine days old, or nine years old, or 90 years old, life is the most important thing in the world. Hold on to every day of it. You are important to the world. You are not going to die. But you don't understand, voice. There is no one for me. I want to go. No, Mademoiselle Gouletouache. You are very good to everybody in your life. You have two wishes coming. Make them, they shall be granted. I must go. And the voice was gone. She was I dreaming? Am I senile? Is it true? I have two wishes coming. And she looked in the mirror. And she said, I want to become young and gorgeous and sexy. And voila! She became young and gorgeous and sexy. She couldn't believe what she saw. She touched her body. She had one wish left. You think she wished for a pot of gold? <laughs> no. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you think she wished for Vauvel? She looked at a Tom cat. It was a cat called Tom. She said, Tom, I want you to become an Adana, six feet four, blonde hair, blue eyes, white pearly teeth, dimples, and voila! The cat became an Adana, six feet four, blonde hair, blue eyes, white pearly teeth, dimples. He was gorgeous. She looked at him from the side of the bed and she hid the side. Ah, ah, ah. 
and he walked over to her and he said, See, mademoiselle, aren't you sorry now you took me to the veterinarian and had me fixed? <laughs> so give your heart and soul to me, and life will always be love. Jackie Green. Oh, we'll Jerry be right Lewis. back. We'll be right back. Beautiful, Jack. Okay. Good audience, warm. 